yesterday, and I don't know how many times did he mention about Jesus Christ in one sentence. Come on, come on, come yeah. Amen. <laughs> hey, come on, somebody. Hi, Ruti. How are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm well, and you? Uh, thank you very much. I am blessed blessed of the Lord. Welcome to the Lord's Table with family members at Radio Pulpit. I must say to you that we never address our family as listeners. No, 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 no. Yeah, so welcome to the family. Uh, We hope that you will enjoy the seat that we have reserved for you at the table. (laughs) Yes, I definitely will. I will enjoy it. (laughs) And so you are the founder and CEO of what is called a PEC movement. Tell us more yes. about that. Yes, so um, uh, I'm a founder of a, a movement called PEG movement. So basically it's an evangelistic movement. Uh, we use a PEG, a normal PEG that you use to hang your clothes. So um, God spoke to me uh, while I was at home in 2018. I was washing my clothes and I realized I was short of pegs. And when I sat down and I looked at the PEG, I said, sure. This small thing plays a very important role uh, um, in holding my clothes. So from there, God started ministering to me, and I thought, no, I'm crazy. And uh, I shared it to my brother, and my brother said, no, Bongani, you are crazy. Uh, People wouldn't listen to you. Um, And then from there, the Lord ministered to me, and he said, Bongani, I've given you something to share with the young people. This is an illustration to show them that God loves them. So let me take you through um, the the, the steps of the peg. A peg cannot function without the silver spring in the center. It will never. It will be just two pieces of blanks that mean nothing. What makes it a pack is a silver spring in the center. Same thing with your life as a child of God. If you remove Jesus Christ as the center of your life, you'll be a meaningless person. You will know your purpose. You will know who you are. You will know your identity. So you need Christ to be the center of your life. Number two, when you hang the clothes on the line, why do you put a pack? You put a pack so that the clothes will stay in the line so that they can dry. Same thing with your life. If, 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 if you receive Christ, he keeps you in line. He keeps you in, in the will of the father so that you can have a relationship with the father because he created you number three if i remove the pegs from the clothes what's going to happen to the clothes the clothes are going to fall on the floor they'll get messy they'll get dirty same thing in your life if you decide to remove jesus as the center of your life you're going to find yourself in depression anxiety fear uh, envy so and number four this is the last one that i'm going to close off with is that a pet does not discriminate. A pet does not choose the clothes. It does not matter your status. It does not matter where you were born. It, it does not matter where you come from. It does not matter the color of your skin. A pet does not choose the clothes. A pet's job is to hold. Same thing with Jesus. He says, come as you are. He does not look at you uh, uh, about your past. He says, I want to save you. I want your heart. So God gave me this uh, uh, peg as an illustration to show his love to the young people and during this pandemic, uh, during this pandemic, this COVID-19, in 50 days, we've impacted 300,000 people just using a tag. Mm. We really bless God for that. He's an amazing God. I mean, who would think what yeah. good can come out from a pack? Come on now. Sure. Yes. 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 Now, we have youth that is in Christ, Bongan. We have youth that is in Christ, um, and they know that they've connected. Um, They know, but there are certain things that sometimes you find um, they are removed, they are not connected. What are those things, and how can they make sure that they stay connected and they are hanging on with the PAC movement? Okay, yeah, Uh, through the PAC. One of the very important things for me is mentorship. A lot of young people, they don't have mentors. And oh. for me personally, I, Bongani is not just a Bongani by himself. I have different people who are mentoring me. As soon as I gave my heart to the Lord, mm. people came alongside of me to help me, who've been through the journey, who've been through a lot of difficult things. So Woodpack Movement is not a movement just to get people saved and then we leave them like that. No, mm. we're going we're gonna to help them to be mentored. We're going to help them to start devotions. We're going to help them to pray. We're going to trust God with them so that they can get up and shine in a and make a difference in the community. So we want to make disciples of all nations as Matthew 28 says. Mm. But what are these things that would make us detach?
detach, especially as young people. What makes young people to detach? You know, uh, older people expect young people to be holy. And there are some other older people, which are some of the things that we'll be discussing in the coming month, um, where you find when older people view or look at our young people, all they see is dirt, all they see is sin. You know, when they get into church, they don't even see any good that can come out from our young people. All they see is that, ah, they just need to be washed by the blood in jail. Even though the, the young people are saved. So what are these challenges that are there that can make our young people detach at times? Uh, for me personally, I think the main one is identity. Uh, a lot of young people, they don't know who they, who are, they are. Because yeah. I think if you don't know who you are, you're already defeated. If you don't know your purpose, why are you here on earth? Because I see drugs, I see uh, other stuff, uh, but if you don't know who you are, because if you know who you are, you wouldn't do those stuff. Like with me, I used to sniff petrol, I used to sniff glue, I used to steal, I used to be uh, a, young per- a young person who used to be addicted to, to all different kinds of stuff. Yeah. Because I didn't know who I am. Until I said, Jesus, come into my life. And Jesus said, but when I called you for such a time, I called you to be a monk peace. I called you to go and declare. But if you don't know who you are, you're going to be a meaningless person. That's why you're going to look to other stuff that's going to destroy you. Mm-hmm. And uh, and another thing that I just want to touch on is fear. A lot of people, they have, they have been caught up in fear. For mm-hmm. me, fear is two meanings. The first meaning comes from the enemy. The first meaning of fear says, forget Everything and run. Mm. The devil wants you to forget the promises that God has given you. The devil wants you to forget everything that God has in store for you. Mm. That's why the devil presents to you fear. I uh, says, forget everything and run away. Mm. I, I want to say to somebody, I want you to turn that word fear around and say, face everything and rise. Mm. Face. Everything and rise. Mm. How, how, how are you going to face everything and rise? It's by you giving your heart to the Lord and being plugged into a church and finding yourself an amazing uh, 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 mentor, male to male, female to female. That's how I believe it should be done. And some of our young people also get bored of how we present the gospel to them Come on, in the older yeah. generations. How can we change all of that as um, older, the older generation? Sure, to make an impact because mm. some some you spoke about fear some of our young people are afraid to even get mentors because they don't know if they'll be judged even before they start talking if they'll be embarrassed before they even start talking and so approach is also important um but now the way that we present the gospel to them um sometimes chases them away so how can we make things you know Right, that we are still able to accommodate them in, into or, or also minister to them the pure gospel and they still hear it without being judged or feeling judged or feeling embarrassed or feeling belittled as well. I think, I think for me personally, um, the older generation, they have to understand that the times have changed. Uh, I, I always say this is a very important one. The message will never change, right. but the method will change. The like method. right now, we, yes, the method will change. Like mm-hmm. back in the days, we used to uh, put tents, have crusades and stuff like that. It used to be amazing. But now, it, it's kind of not working out now. Now, this, this generation is on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and, 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 and you know, the, the, they, they love going out to events. So I think as the body of Christ, we need to create those methods. And remember, we should not bring the word into the church, but we should take the word of God to the world. So the problem with us is we, we want to keep up with the times and also we want to uh, uh, compromise in what we do. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That will never change. You know, we're going to make it exciting, but we're never going to compromise in bringing the word. So same thing that with me. I do my most of my ministry uh, through uh, coach. I do coach. I do uh, Instagram. 